I'm Mayor Bill McLeod, and I want to welcome all of you to the um, veterans meeting today. We honor all our veterans, everyone who served, everybody who sacrificed, died, and those who have served in our military service to provide for the American people. We honor all those in the 235 years of the independence of the United States of America. Brave men and women have always come forward, answer our country's call. From the days of the revolution to Afghanistan and Iraq, they still answered that call, and we're here to thank them. On the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month, November 11th, 1918, the Great War ended the war to end all wars, and we have subsequently, unfortunately, realized that that war did not end all war, and our people are still out there fighting today to preserve our freedom, and we thank them all very, very deeply. I would ask that the uh, Chairman Les Montag and the Veterans Commission come forward at this point. Chairman Montag. Mr. Chairman, will you lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I want to acknowledge some of the uh, dignitaries that are with us today. We have a Hoffman Estate State Representative Fred Crespo is with us. We have Trustee Karen Mills. We have Trustee Gary Stanton. And we have Trustee Gary Palafis, who is one of the members of a Veterans Commission. The gentlemen you see behind you assemble every Sunday at 1 p.m. to honor a fallen veteran who has served their country with distinction. And we thank them, rain, sleet, or snow, they're always there. They're always there. This time I'd like to introduce Miss Beth Rafferty to sing our national anthem. Beth? Say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hail at the twilight's last? 
glass gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watch were so gallantly streaming and the rockets with clear the bombs boosting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star spangled Thank you, Ms. Rafferty. That was beautiful. I want to thank the Hoffman Estates High School Band, which always comes out for this celebration. And the high school has been a magnificent partner with our community. They, they come to any event we ask them to participate, and we really very much appreciate that. At this time, I'd like to introduce Les Montag, who is the chairman of our Veterans Memorial Commission, to give a little history on uh, Veterans Day. Les? November 11th is the anniversary of the armistice at 5.30 or 5 a.m. on Monday, November 11th, 1918, the Germans signed the armistice. An order was issued for all firing to cease and all hostilities of the First World War ended. This day began with the laying down of arms, blowing of whistles, impromptu parades, closing of all places of business all over the globe. There were many demonstrations. No doubt the world had never before witnessed such rejoicing. <coughs> On November, in November of 1919, President Woodrow Wilson issued his Armistice Day pro proclamation. This paragraph will set the tone for the future observances. To us in America, the reflections of Armistice Day will be filled with the solemn pride of the heroism of those who died in this country's service and with gratitude for the victory, both because of the of the thing from which it was freed us and because of the opportunity it has given America to show its sympathy with peace and justice in the councils of nations. <clears throat> in 1927, Congress issued the resolution requesting President Calvin Coolidge to issue a proclamation calling upon officials to display the flag of the United States of all the government buildings in, on November 11th and inviting the people to observe the day in schools and churches. But it was not until 1938 that Congress passed a bill that each November 11th shall be dedicated to the cause of world peace and hereafter celebrated and known as Armistice Day. <clears throat> that same year, President Franklin Delano Roosevelt signed a bill making the day a legal holiday in the District of Columbia. For 16 years, the United States formally observed Armistice Day, which with impressive ceremonies at the tomb of the unknown soldier, where the chief executive or representative would place a wreath. In many other communities, the American Legion was in charge of the observance, which included parades, religious services. At 11 a.m., all traffic stopped in tribute to the dead, then volleys were fired and taps sounded. After World War II, there were many new veterans who had little or no association with World War I. The word armistice means simply a truce. Therefore, as years passed, the significance of the name of this holiday changed. Leaders of veterans groups decided to take, try to correct this and make November 11th the time to honor all who had fought in various American wars, not just World War I. In Emporia, Kansas, on November 11th, 1953, instead of an Armistice Day program, there was a Veterans Day observance. Ed Reese of Emporia was so impressed that he introduced a bill into the house to change the name to Veterans Day. After this passed, Mr. Reese wrote to all state governors and asked for their approval and cooperation observing that changed holiday. The name was changed to Veterans Day by Act of Congress on May 24, 1954. In October of that year, President Eisenhower called on all citizens to observe the day by remembering the sacrifices of all those who fought so gallantly and through rededication to the task of promoting enduring peace. 
president referred to the change of name to Veterans Day in honor of all servicemen of all American wars. Again, I want to thank everybody for coming today. This is our way in Hoffman Estates of honoring our veterans besides our memorial here that we, we have set up that we honor a dif different veteran every Sunday at one o'clock. The uh, veteran's name is in a sign placard behind me here and his flag flies for one week. His branch of service flag is hit, uh, lowered to half staff and we do this, uh, we have, right now we have 90 deceased veterans in our rotation. We do this on a weekly basis. It started in 1988 when the memorial was first dedicated, and we have not missed a Sunday since. Uh, like the mayor said, rain, snow, sleet, sand, there's always a group out here on Sunday at 1 o'clock to honor our uh, deceased veterans. And uh, the public is more than welcome to come. And uh, the Veterans Commission is always looking for new members. All you have to do is be a veteran or a spouse of a veteran to become a member, fill out an application, and we'd be more than happy to welcome anybody in that wants to join. At this time, I'd like everybody to face east for a moment of silence, please. Thank you. At this time, I'd like to uh, recognize the, what the, a group called the Warriors Watch. The Warriors Watch riders envision a day when every member of the armed forces at home and abroad and their families feel appreciated, honored, and respected and loved by the citizens they risk their lives for. This group has come out here today to help us celebrate our ceremony. And as you can see, they're behind you, most of them with the American flags. They do this on their own. And uh, it's their way of honoring our veterans, past and present, and uh, showing respect for our veterans. I'd uh, like to everybody to give them a round of applause, please. At this time, I'd like to introduce Sergeant Williams. He's from. He's from Bravo Company, minus 935th Aviation Support Battalion of Chicago, and he's going to give us a few remarks on Veterans Day. Good morning, everybody, and happy Veterans Day. I am Staff Sergeant Marcus C. Williams of the Illinois Army National Guard. I'm an eight-year service member currently serving at B-minus 935th Aviation Support Battalion located in Chicago, Illinois. At my unit, I am the Human Resource Administrator and also one of the many helicopter mechanics we have at B-minus 935th. Today, it is my pleasure to be speaking in front of a crowd that includes professional men and women that have sacrificed and served their country so proudly in past wars, their families that have supported them in times of need, Soldiers like myself, who have recently returned from Operation Iraqi and Enduring Freedom, and the Armed Forces, future enlistees that will one day have the opportunity to serve this great nation. In my opinion, all of you are the heroes. Not the NBA players like Kobe Bryant, or Major League Baseball World Series players like Albert Pujols. Not even NFL players like Brian Urlacher. And yes, those individuals may be heroes to some, but to me the word hero holds a much deeper meaning especially since the terrorist attacks on our country 10 years ago. Firefighters, police officers, and service members are the human beings I envision when I think of the word hero. People of distinguished courage or ability admired for his or her brave deeds and noble qualities. So when I was offered this opportunity to help honor and celebrate Veterans Day at this event, I jumped on the opportunity. Veterans Day has been honored each year on November 11th. This date, the guns fell silent at the end of war, World War I, the conflict that was supposed to be the war that ended all wars. But as we all know, history turned out differently. Exactly two months before Veterans Day in 2001, our nation experienced the worst attack on American soil in our history. Before September 11, America went through a long period of peace when there was little threat to our way of life. But regardless of the threat level, military members still train, 
They still deployed and they still completed, completed peacekeeping missions supporting other nations struggling with their freedoms. Whether it was Pearl Harbor, World War II, Korea, Vietnam, Panama, Desert Storm, Kosovo, Bosnia, or even when those 19 suicide bombers attacked our nation. No matter the conflict, U.S. citizens stood by their country, our country, devoted to our freedoms and what we believe in, the United States of America. With that, I ask all of you to take a moment. Think of the devotion service members have shown in the past and still continue to show today. Regardless of the threats and risks they may face, they put their lives on the line for our freedom. Just think about if there hadn't been a Sergeant Alvin York, the most decorated soldier in World War I. Would the enemy have surrendered? Think about the freedoms we enjoy and just how different they might have been if our veterans stopped training after World War I. Imagine that 2nd Lieutenant Audie Murphy had never joined the 15th Infantry Division or if he hadn't even joined the U.S. Army at all. How many of those soldiers from that same Infantry Division would not have survived combat, made it home back to their wives, and been there to help raise their children? Now think about this. What if our veterans didn't deploy in World War II? What if our veterans had stopped supporting our country after Korea and Vietnam? What if our veterans had stopped maintaining their sense of readiness during the Cold War? Our service members and veterans never back down. They always stand ready to fight. And as we have heard and read about so much over the last 10 years, some even die. And for what? Just to maintain our freedom. Like the firefighters, the police officers who serve our communities and put their lives on the line every day to protect us. Service members and veterans do the same and never think twice about doing it. This is why I call you heroes. 2011 marks many milestones in our history. 150 years ago, our country began a bloody civil war that helped keep this nation together. The Department of Defense has recognized 2011 as the 50th anniversary of the start of the Vietnam conflict, with 1961 being the year ground forces began to move into the battle country. 2011 also marked the 20th anniversary of Desert Storm, but most recently many of you can remember exactly where you were and what you were doing 10 years ago when our country were attacked on 9-11. Since the terrorist attacks in 2001, more than 5,500 of our brave men and women in uniform have died for our country. Two fallen comrades that I personally will always remember that died in the war on terror are Corporal Pat Tillman and Sergeant Albert D. Ware. Pat Tillman, a man, so a man so devoted to his country that he gave up his professional football career with the Arizona Cardinals to serve in the armed forces with the U.S. Army Rangers. He completed seven tours of combat before being killed in action in Afghanistan during Operation Enduring Freedom in 2004. Sergeant Albert D. Ware, a fellow soldier and a personal friend of mine, was also killed in action while serving his second tour in Afghanistan. His father, originally from Liberia, brought Sergeant Ware to America at the age of 12. Sergeant Ware and I became battle buddies and friends while we both served in the Illinois Army National Guard. Albert eventually decided he wanted to serve his country in a full-time capacity, so he transferred components and went active duty Army in 2006. While assigned to the 4th Brigade Combat Team, 82nd Airborne Division, Albert died of wounds suffered during an enemy attack when an improvised explosive device, otherwise known as an IED, had detonated in his presence. I stand here before you today wearing Sar Sergeant Albert D's wear name tape on my field hat because this is the way I show my appreciation for his sacrifice. Sergeant Albert D. Ware and Corporal Pat Tillman are just two individuals who have died while fighting for their country to keep the principles and freedom of democracy we uphold as true. Of the 5,500 men and women in uniform that have died in the war since 2001, 630 National Guardsmen, 630 are National Guardsmen, excuse me. That number includes 34 Illinois National Guard members. More than 14,000 soldiers in Illinois Army National Guard have deployed in support of Operations Iraq and in Enduring Freedom. More than 8,800 airmen of the Air National Guard have deployed in support of various missions. Many of these service members have deployed multiple times and all of them have made the sacrifice for you. National Guard soldiers and airmen have continued to uphold the standards of their predecessors and they have continued to serve honorably throughout the United States and overseas as part of America's total force. With that being said, and by me being a National Guard soldier, 
I would like to take my final minutes to mention some incredibly heroic soldiers of the guard that distinguished themselves in battle. January 2009, Major Troy Scott of Springfield, an Illinois National Guard soldier while patrolling in Afghanistan, witnessed a grenade thrown at his team from a neighboring rooftop. He acted without hesitation, picked up the grenade, and threw it away from his patrol. Not stopping there, he ran to the nearest soldier, knocked him to the ground, and covered that soldier's body with his own, shielding him from the blast. Even after Major Scott had separated his right shoulder and had shrapnel wounds to his cheek and right arm, he finished the mission and didn't seek medical attention until all of the members of his group had returned to base. Sergeant First Class Ryan A. Hearn of Glen Allen, another Illinois Army National Guardsman with Company Alpha, 2nd Battalion, 20th Special Forces Group in Chicago received one of France's top military awards in Purple Heart for his actions in 2009. While coming under attack on an Afghanistan hilltop, shrapnel hit Sergeant First Class A. Hart in the calves, the legs, the shoulder, and the head, but this did not stop him. His only main concern was ensuring his fellow soldiers were safe and not overrun. Sergeant First Class A. Hart later said he was more worried about the others more than himself, and quote, these are the guys you go to battle with. These are the guys you protect. Probably a more well-known Illinois Army National Guardsman to the city of Hoffman Estates that defines heroism is native Lieutenant Colonel Tammy Duckworth. Lieutenant Colonel Tammy Duckworth has received the Air Medal, Army Com Commendation Medal, and Purple Heart for her gallantry. She sustained injuries after a rocket propelled grenade hit the UH-60 Blackhawk she was piloting on November 12, 2004. She has become a vocal member of the National Guard community, serving as the Illinois Veterans Affairs Director before being appointed by President Obama in 2009 to serve with Veterans Affairs in Washington, D.C. Although she has left that position this year, she continues to advocate and serve for veterans and remains a member of the Illinois Army National Guard. These are, all, these are only some of the American veterans whom we have come to honor today. They represent the millions of American men and women who have served their nation and community since the National Guard began 375 years ago. Today we have uniformed men and women deployed around the world. I ask you to join me in saluting members of our military, past and present, for their dedication, bravery, courage, and heroism at home and abroad. Thank you all again, and happy Veterans Day. Thank you, Sergeant Williams, for your inspiring address, and thank you very much for your service. You're an embodiment of the outstanding men and women who serve in the U.S. Armed Forces and protect us. Thank you, from the bottom of my heart. I'd like to introduce the Hoffman Estates High School Band.
again, I want to thank the Hoffman Estates High School Band for participating in this uh, this event again today. We really appreciate your your willingness to answer the call of our veterans. At this time, I'd like to introduce uh, Reverend Alan Eaton for a closing invocation. Shall we pray? Father, you created us to serve. And we're so grateful that from the very inception of our nation, men and women have stepped forward onto the battlefield of life to serve. And today we remember all who have served. And we remember those who are serving right now. May we always give them honor. May we always daily remember them in prayer. May we always let them know in ways beyond how much we appreciate their service. Father, we are told in your word that there is no greater love than when a person lays down their life for another. And today we remember the men and women throughout the history of our nation who have laid their lives down in service. That we today might understand freedom. And that we might protect freedom and cherish it and pass it on to the next generation. And thus today we would ask that you would renew our resolve to live free to make sure others are free and to always, always be willing to step onto the playing field of life to serve. Bless us that we in return might continue to be a blessing in this world in which you've placed us. We pray in your name. Amen. Thank you, Reverend Eaton. Again, I'd like to thank the Hoffman Estates High School Band, Ms. Beth Rafferty, for her stirring rendition of, the, of our national anthem, and Staff Sergeant Williams for his participation in this event. I'd also like to thank all of you who came here. It's important that we remember veterans every day of the year, not just on November 11th. The man you see walking down the street, the woman in the car driving next to you may have served our country, and we have to be grateful to them every day of the year. We have to be a people worthy of their service and worthy of their sacrifice. That's the responsibility we have as citizens. Are we as people, are we worthy of all that they gave? And it's our obligation to make sure that this country is always worthy of that sacrifice. At this time, I'd like to uh, ask the Hoffman Estates High School Bland to play God Bless USA.
much. I want to thank uh, band director Bob Erickson and the students for participating today. Um, they come every year to honor our veterans, and we really appreciate your coming every year. Can we have a big round of applause for the band? Thanks again to the band. Thanks to Beth Rafferty. Thanks to thanks Staff Sergeant Williams. Thank uh, Reverend Alan Eaton for his inspiring uh, words. Alan always seems to know the right thing to say. And I'm always very happy that I get to talk before him and not after him. <laughs> um, we will have some refreshments inside the police building. At this time, I'd ask the Veterans Memorial Commission members who we really need to thank. They come out. Every Sunday, 1 o'clock, no matter what the weather is, no matter what's happening, I've seen them in rainstorms, snowstorms, way below zero weather, they always come to honor a fallen comrade. So thank you. And thank all the veterans. Thank you for your service. <laughs> Want to retire a commission, Chairman Montag? Right, Thank you all again for coming, and please remember our veterans 365 days a year and not just on Veterans Day. It's so inspiring to see so many people come out on a cold, gloomy day. You come out because you owe a debt of gratitude, and we appreciate your showing that here in Hoffman Estates that we do remember and we remember every day. Thank you.